Talk about a review long time in the making. I plan on doing this review back around review 7 or 8 when I did Crash to Insanity and Secret Weapons over Normandy. I plan on doing a trio of PS2 games, but this one kind of just fell off the map. Anyways, we're going to be talking about a game that sheds new light, or more accurately, sheds darkness on a familiar PlayStation series. Twisted Metal Black for the PS2. The Twisted Metal series centered around the concept of vehicular combat, in which you drive around in cars and try to eliminate everybody else. Every game leading up to the PS2 had a very cartoony feel, even though the contestants were being killed technically by machine guns, missiles, explosions, and fire. When the series made the jump to PS2, they decided to turn up the gore and dark imagery to the max. As with other Twisted Metal games, there's a single match mode and a story mode, which is really where Twisted Metal Black separates itself from the other games. Each character has their own backstory and why they're entering the Twisted Metal competition in order to be granted a wish. A few characters have good intentions, but a majority of them are out for revenge, malevolence, malice, you get the picture. Even morally right characters kind of have awful backstories. The older Twisted Metal games did have character backstories, but they were relegated to just text, whereas in this game you get cinematic cutscenes that further tell the story and the motivations of the characters. In the story mode, you get updates throughout the tournament to see how the character changes over time, which is really where Twisted Metal Black shines, the atmosphere and the tone. It's incredibly dark and creepy. I don't own or play many horror games, but this one genuinely scares me. There's not a single part of the whole game that isn't scary, except maybe the gameplay itself. It just feels like normal gameplay, but the menus, cutscenes, and overall aesthetic is nightmare fuel. Speaking of the menus, the menus and the character select screens are really creative and definitely add to the character's backstory as you highlight and scroll through them. Seeing them in a freeze frame really just shows how crazy and maniacal some of these people truly are. The first thing I noticed about the actual gameplay was the difficulty. Holy crap, this is hard. It's frustratingly hard. You get three lives per level to take out the rest of the field. With Twisted Metal 2, I'd expect some of the computer opponents to take each other out, but no. That's not what happens in Twisted Metal Black. It seems like I have to take them all out myself, and I have to use every bit of my three lives to do it. I tried playing in the story mode, and then I tried playing in the challenge mode, and they both seem equally difficult. I tried lowering the difficulty from medium to easy, and that helped marginally, but in order to beat everyone, you have to sweat. There's no way around it. Except for one thing, and that is playing with a second player. Yeah, I've always enjoyed playing through the Twisted Metal games with my brother because it's genuinely hard to find games with decent co-op campaigns or story modes, and Twisted Metal has always been able to provide that. However, in the previous games it was more of a luxury, whereas here it seems like a necessity since it reduces the number of enemies by one, and you get a partner to help take on the horde. I mean, I usually played this game in a two-player mode, which is why I've been drastically shocked by the difficulty of it. As with the other Twisted Metal entries, the combat revolves around using power-ups scattered throughout the maps, which has been fairly balanced. The hard-hitting power-ups are harder to hit, and the homing missiles, they're a little bit easier to hit, but they don't hit as hard. The only wild cards are the special attacks, which by design are supposed to play the strength and weaknesses of each character. One thing that does annoy me about the power-ups is that the computer opponents can do the secret moves crazily easy. I mean, you're going to freeze an opponent or do a jump by some secret button combo that never really seems to work for me, but they can do it on command every few seconds. Enjoy being frozen multiple times a game? That's what you're going to get. Overall, I still really like this game. It gives me classic Twisted Metal vibes, even though it still creeps me out as an adult. I'm just disappointed in the difficulty. It really turns me off to it. I mean, if I sat in a building for 5 or 10 minutes and none of the computer opponents did anything else to anybody, it's legitimately 1 versus 8, and at best I can take out 2 people with 1 life. Normally I would show my top and bottom games overall, but since most of them are falling in the middle now and I have enough games in a single console, I can do a list on just a single console, which in this case is the PS2. I've reviewed 11 games, so I can do a top and bottom 5. Unfortunately, Super Monkey Ball doesn't appear on the list, but Twisted Metal Black does, and it comes in just barely on the better side. If it wasn't so difficult, it would be higher, possibly third on this list, but really, it just wasn't that fun to play for me because it was that hard. Wow, sitting on that footage for almost two years. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, it's gone now, so I have to play some more games. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed at least a little bit. Next review should be coming soon. See you then.